Hello. Uh, today we're going to try to see how we're going to be able to import uh, data from XML files directly into our open solar collections. Uh, so we've added here two sample uh, collections, the solar add XML and the SAP XML data uh, that we're going to try to uh, import data to. Uh, and we're going to go through both of these. Uh, the most important thing we should know is that we should create the files, we should, or we should have them created. Uh, the first case, the solar add XML, it's uh, based on this file. Uh, so first of all, you have to create this type of file. This is the um, uh, XML file format that uh, Solar expects whenever we import data using the post.jar command. Um, so therefore, this would work um, pretty good if we have um, to add default uh, XML data. Um, the only thing we have to make sure is that we format the document correctly and that we have an add tag here that uh, ends here and the doc um, encapsulates all the fields that we need. Uh, so let's go through the collection. Uh, first of all, we've created it. It's the solar add XML. And uh, the first thing that we have to do is go to the edit db data config XML file and set up a few uh, directives here in this XML file. Um, as you may have noticed, um, the difference between this one and uh, when we were trying to import data from MySQL was that uh, we are now using a different data source, which is the HTTP data source, and can also be called the URL data source. Um, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, and here, we're going to define an entity inside this uh, document tag uh, that would contain a few uh, parameters, a few attributes. Um, the first attribute here, we're going to go through all these. So uh, the first one is just a generic name. You just have to name your entity. Uh, in my case, it's products because this is what I have here. Are actually, two products. It's test data, right? Um, next, we're going to have to define the primary key. What is our primary key? Uh, in my case, it is the ID uh, that we have here. Uh, then we need to tell it whether we would like the file to be streamed or not. Uh, this is very useful to set it to true whenever we were using very large files. Uh, I'm going to use it now as well because it's just giving me a uh, safer feeling. But you know, uh, you, you can you can either set it to false if, if the file is not so large. Um, okay, the next one is use solar add schema. This is very important. Uh, you have to use this if your schema, your XML file looks like this, right? Is If it is the default format that uh, Solar expects, right? Uh, because if you use this, you don't have to map the fields. You don't have to, to uh, define each field, right, inside this entity here. Uh, so, which is pretty good, right? Which is very, very good, actually. Uh, because this way, you need, you, you're gonna, it's gonna make things a lot easier, right? So this, you have to use this if you're going to import data from this type of XML files. Okay. Then the URL. Now, our XML file, this XML file, you've created it, but how do you access it over your over uh, HTTP, right? You, this file has to be accessible over HTTP. What I did was I went along and um, uploaded this file to the ownalbum.com file sharing service. Um, I'm going to open it uh, right now. So I'm going to go to my files manager. So you can see here the solar add. Uh, this is, uh, as you can see here, it's a private file. Um, not many people can get access to it unless I give them the link to the file. Um, so it's it's a way that I can expose the file with without other people looking at it, right? <laughs> uh, and of course, if you have your own Apache server that you can serve the file from, that's even better, right? But anyway, I just I just imagined, you know, not many people have a web server and. Uh, uh, this would be a m simpler way to do it. Uh, now we can just uh, copy the link address here. You know, see this little link here. Down, uh, link here. Download the Solar XML, uh, Solar Add XML. And after you copied it, you just have to paste it here. This is exactly what I did, and uh, you can see it's the Solar Add XML file. Uh, this is a download link, a direct link to the file. Then the processor has to be XPath Entity Processor. Uh, if we're going to use XML or XHTML valid documents. Um, 
and the transformer. This is not really important. I'm not going to go through this. Uh, you can get more information about transformers here in the data import request handler wiki page. Um, it basically has to do with mapping more data types. If you have a data type in here that you'd like to map and transform it, uh, this is going to come in handy. Uh, but we're not going to go through this now. So yeah, we have we have this setup, right? The next step is to ensure that we have all these fields inside our schema XML file. Right, uh, so that they can go inside our index. So we have to open the schema XML, and uh, we have to make sure all the fields are in place. First of all, that the field uh, the field ID that we've set up as a primary key. Uh, if we remember here, we've set up the primary key to be the ID, which is this one. Uh, this has to be unique throughout all the documents inside our XML file, and in the schema. Once we once we go here, um, we're just going to have to make sure that this is set up here and that we're using it as a, as a unique key here. Right. Once we uh, saw that that's happening, we just can we can go on and define every other field: name, manufacturer, category, and whatever. Right. Whatever, just like it is in here. Um, and then uh, what we have to do is. Uh, now that we've set up the schema as well with all the fields that we need, uh, the DB data config is also set up. All we have to do is just go here. Well, I'm going to click on Solar Search. It's kind of a shortcut for me. You, you can see no document exists in the index right now. We have the query set to give us everything it is, but it's nothing indexed right now. And uh, we're just going to go to Data Import. And we're going to issue the command equals full import, right? Uh, when we click OK, it, we hit enter, we get index completed, you know, it added two documents, right? So it's these two documents. Um, if we uh, go back here and we're going to search again, we can see the documents added. It's pretty much that simple. This is it, right? So this is how you can import data directly from your XML file. You can get more information on more advanced features on using this data source, right, on, on usage XML HTTP data source here in the wiki page of Solar. And you can see exactly how you can define your DB data config XML file for more advanced options. But this is pretty much, we, we just covered a very basic example of how you can just add a collection and with a few clicks you get to index all your data, right? Okay, moving on. So now that we have this, I'm um, just uh, going to close these. And I'm going to go back to list collections and moving on to the SAP XML data. Now, most of you might not be aware, but um, uh, you can actually index data directly from SAP uh, or, or any other uh, XML, uh, miscellaneous XML file format. In our case, we created this file. Actually, SAP exported this file, the yeah, SAP system exported this file with orders. Right, so uh, we have the order status, uh, we have the order number here, and we have the items that have been ordered. Right, um, and we go back here. It's the things that we did here are pretty much the same. Right, we edited the DB data config, but this time, a few things differ here. First of all, we set up the entity. We gave it a name. This is the SAP orders. Right, entity. Uh, it has the primary key order number, which can be found here. Uh, but as you can see, this is no longer the same format as this file. So Solar will not understand it if we don't map the fields. So what we have to do is uh, we have to specify the streaming is uh, true here if we're using large files. Uh, specify the URL uh, exactly as we did before. Uh, it goes to the SAP orders. Again, I uploaded it via the own album um, file sharing service. Uh, again, it's a private file that I've uh, shared here, and you can just copy the link address. Okay, uh, then the processor has to be XPath Entity Processor, and th this is the very important thing that we need for miscellaneous formatted XML files, uh, that we need to tell Solar which XPath um, entities are we interested in, what fields are we interested in indexing. Um, so, in our case, we took order status. I mean, why did I put this in here? It means that am I interested in grabbing any fields that are direct children of order status? 
And yes, I'm interested in order number, which is a direct child of order status. Right? Um, so I added this to the for each uh, attribute here. And then we added another attribute, order status items item, which it means that uh, am I interested in grabbing any direct children of this XPath, order status items and item. And yes, I am. I am interested in these three fields, right? Parts, number, units, and price, uh, you know, which uh, are actually the fields contained within this XPath, right? So uh, then I simply just define my fields here. I, this is a mapping, right? I, speci I also specify the XPath here to the full field, right? The path to the full field. But I could have uh, omitted this, right? But Solar sometimes knows where to look. But it's, it's uh, a lot, you know, less memory extensive to do it like this, to specify the XPath, right? So it's a little easier on the server. Um, yeah, so all you have to do is this, right? The common field is better, re better, uh, is better explained in the data import uh, handler here uh, in the wiki page. Uh, it actually means that it's going to put these fields in every document, right, uh, if, you, if you set it up as a common field. Um, okay, and again, uh, in this exact same manner, uh, we're interested in these fields, which means that uh, we have to set up the map in the schema XML. First of all, we have to make sure that we have our primary key uh, set up in the schema XML correctly. We're going to go to schema XML. Uh, our primary key is order number, which is this one. Uh, we set it up as a unique key here, uh, and then we define all our other fields. You can observe I have a field that's useless here. I'm not gonna, I'm not using it actually, but you know, you, you can put or remove useless fields. It doesn't really matter, right? Um, it's just gonna ignore it, right? So, um, okay, if you have uh, this set up and uh, the schema XML to define all the fields. All you have to do right now is go back uh, in the search. Uh, you don't get anything, and then run data import and issue the command full import, right? And you can see it added two documents. What this means is it's not actually two documents because if we're looking at it, it's just one with uh, order number uh, part. Of it. So we only have one item, right? But it's it it reports two because. Um, it, we have two paths here, right? So it has to parse two paths, two X paths, right? The order status and this one, order say items, item. This could be done in, in various other ways. Uh, I'm not saying this is the best way to go about it, but I think, uh, but it actually works, right? And I think this is uh, this is how we probably should do it. Um, but it, it really works, right? So uh, if we go to uh, and refresh this, okay, it's it's imported. And now we're just going to go back here and do a search, and we can see that we have all the values here, right? The price, the order number, the part number, exactly as we've defined them in here, right? Uh, okay, so this, uh, these things are now, you know, we have all these things uh, created, and uh, they are uh, uh, ready, right? Uh, and we can perform searches. Right, exactly as we would have done in the in the first index, and uh, you can put here like price twelve, right? And um, it returns this one, but if you put uh, like uh, price equals thirteen, you don't get anything, right? So you can you can just uh, perform any type of search. Now imagine this one with a few thousand items and a few thousand orders and so on and so forth. You would get um, a pretty comprehensive, you know, index, a pretty a very good way to play around with searches uh, in, it, in, in there, right? Um, okay, so this is pretty much it. This is how you can index data from XML, right? Now, again, more advanced options are listed here, right? You can go through this documentation and see exactly how you uh, how you can set up the DB data config in order to take advantage of the most uh, advanced features of um, of the uh, of the importer, right? And uh, as a quick hint, you can definitely use more than just MySQL and XML. You can use uh, anything that's supported here, right? Uh, file reader, the content stream, and uh, so on and so forth. So you can use this uh, wiki page to uh, get some relevant documentation on data importing uh, and 
can import data very easily. Uh, thank you very much uh, and um, I hope uh, you're going to succeed.